The Ghost of Tabor new bunker has come out about a few months ago, I think one or two. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about it. Whether you're a player that's been playing for uh, a few months, or maybe you're brand new to the game, I'm going to tell you things that you probably did not know about the bunker and that are going to be useful for you. This video will be separated into chapters. The thing we're going to be doing is we're going to do a quick look over on the terminal. On the terminal, there is a few important things you want to do when you first start playing Ghost of Tabor. First thing is there's locations on the right. Right now, there is only Missile Silo and Island of Tabor, but they are going to be adding maps soon. One thing to notice, if you are selected on Island of Tabor, there is a day and a night time. Be cautious on the nighttime mode for your Island of Tabor though, because it is literally pitch black. Like, you cannot see anything without night vision, especially on quests. Other than that, you can also invite people to your squad using these buttons right here. It will take you to your friends page, your contacts page. If you want to add someone, you're going to go over to the add friend button, find their username, add them. Then when you want to invite them to a squad, you go to the friends tab, you click on them, and then you hit the invite button. When you receive an invite to the squad, it will be up here in the top right right on this little notifications button and very important to go along with all of this is the missions button this is very very important because if you do not level up your traders you cannot unlock high level trades as you can see i just accepted a few quests right there those were me completing those quests as you can see these are my current quests and their completion but if you want to get a new quest select what trader you want to do a quest for in my case i'll be doing a specter quest and you can look down and find what quest suits you now there are two requirements to leveling up a trader. As you can see, I am level two, and to level this up, you need reputation points and also Karunas. For Karunas, you have to sell whatever number it is, in my case 400,000, you have to sell 400,000 Karunas worth of items to this trader. And for reputation, you can only get reputation through doing your missions. So make sure you always have missions selected when you're going into raids. By doing these missions, you will also get Karunas too, so this is a good way to make a few extra Karunas if you are dirt broke. To accept a mission, you literally, all you have to do is hover your finger over one. I'll do kill 15 Phoenix with an assault rifle. I'll select it. All you have to do is press your trigger and it will automatically end up on the side. But some of the other ones, you can just kind of play the game without really paying attention to them as much but for instance kill five players without dying three times you are gonna want to keep track of this one in your head that is everything to do with this front panel that i can think of for you guys so if you have any questions let me know in the comments i will answer every single one starting off with our first room we are going into the armory the first thing you see when you enter your armory is two armor stands and these can hold helmets and chest rigs for you as well as that is there's two shelves on the side that will save items two backpack hooks a small wall which if you're very first starting out to this game there will be all your starter weapons here the door to your right goes into the main portion of the armory and the door on our left will go into the extra armory first thing you'll see when you go in here three new backpack hooks on our left side two armor cabinets just like the armor stands these can hold armors and helmets three of each we have another armor stand right here another weapon wall which i'll show you guys how to use if you don't know how to use it already and another cabinet which can hold three armors and three helmets our desk which has four shelves one desk space that saves all your items as well is four drawers which you can put stuff in. over here we have the bullet crafter where you can make flats of ammo and a magazine loader so you don't have to struggle with your bullets loading them one by one over here we have a trash can do not put anything in here you are not ready to delete because once it's in there it's gone for instance if we grab this can of sardines and we just chuck them in here boom gone right here is a vice grip you can put weapons on there so you can easily put attachments on there with the vice grip all you have to do is put it to an angle you like and just let go of your gun while on top of it this will put your gun in here and now you can add attachments. All right, the Ghost of Tabor wiki actually does back up this claim, but for some reason, I could not get any attachments to attach to my gun while in the vice grip. So I'm gonna skip over this portion, but if you guys can figure out how it works and I'm just dumb, just comment down below. Something I do know how to use 100%. We can go to the ammo crafter. Can you stop opening, please? To make a flat of ammo, you will need two ingredients. You will need brass, and for some reason, all these are empty for me. Oh, there we go. We got some brass going in there. You need brass, and you also will need gunpowder. When it comes to the gunpowder you use, there's three different types, and all of them are separated by what they say on the cap. The red cap is just your standard ammunition. The orange tannish cap that says AP on the top stands for armor piercing. And the brown cap that says TR stands for tracer rounds. You pour powder in there as well as you pour your brass in there. They both are marked so you can see. This one's a little hard to see since I'm recording on Quest, so I'll just lay it out for you. The top row is your caliber, so what size of bullets you are making. The second row is what kind of ammo you are making. That depends on your gunpowder, so if you use something other than standard, make sure to scroll over to it. They are all marked by their indicated letters that are on top of your gunpowder. And your last row is quantity of ammo. When you're done selecting your settings, all you have to do is press down the lever and you will have a flat of ammo. Rip it with one hand and with the other hand, hit your grip trigger. 
pull it out and as you can see all your bullets are there. Crank the lever to make your box of ammo and you will now have a flat full of ammo. So as you can see you can take these rounds out one by one and load your magazine but that is not very worth it. It takes up a lot of time. What you can do instead is you can go over here place some bullets by extending out to the point you want oh god by extending out to the point you want with your box of ammo holding it upside down and pressing the trigger on your hand that's holding it will dump however much ammo is revealed out into the machine by doing this you can now take your standard magazine or whatever magazine you are loading with that kind of ammo and hit the load button this will automatically load your magazine to full for you once it says finish loading there we go and now we have a full oh almost full <laughs> magazine we can go ahead, there we go, now we have our mag loaded and we did not have to put it in manually. We can now head over to the weapon wall. This one is very self explanatory but basically it holds your weapons, magazines, and you know basically your weapons and magazines. So to put a gun onto a weapon wall, hold it with whatever hand you prefer and turn it to what angle you want it to rest on the wall at. Holding it like this, hold it right in front of the wall just how you would place it on there except for you're holding it. You can put it at a distance, that's what I like to do. And showing right there is your preview. Say I want to have my gun right up against this other one right here. I can just aim it right there. And then once you do that, you just let go of your gun and it will place itself on the wall. Other than that, that is basically everything with the armory. You have backpack hooks. If you go over into this room, you have a wider storage, more cabinets, more mannequins, more backpack hooks. Two huge walls of storage for your favorite weapons. Storage room like the armory is meant to just hold your extras and it is a very simple room. As you can see, two saving shelves and you know, another uh, flat saving shelf right here. Go over to the right, a bunch more shelves. This is perfect so you can organize your inventory out and so you don't have to keep as much stuff in your terminal and we will go over that later. Once again, another room full of shelves so you can put your stuff away. Storage is just for your general bulk items that you just don't really have a spot for necessarily. Coming out of the maintenance room, we can go to the kitchen. This one actually has some purpose. As you can see, there are shelves and it is obviously meant for you to store your food, but there is also your tap. By putting a water filter on there, which is very easy, all you have to do is grab it and literally just put it right there against the wall. It basically does it for you. Now you can use your sink. As you can see, it pours out water. It will take durability off of the filter, but you can fill up things like your water bottles simply by putting it under the sink, turning the tap on and just filling it up. As you can see, that room is very simple. So that one did not take much time. Over here, we have the trade room, which is another one of the few main rooms. In here, ignore my gas cans. There is your trading terminal. We have three more shelves and the selling terminal, which I think is very, very important to everything in this game. Starting off with this terminal, as you can see, there's a few different things over here and a warning, empty your kiosk, traders will charge a fee soon. So you're gonna wanna keep as many items out of here and on your shelves as you can. But as you can see, some things will be in here. If you ever leave something on the floor, when you go into a raid, it will automatically put itself into your terminal. So you try not to lose as many things. Whenever you wanna grab something out of your terminal, you can go ahead, find it, and just hit the trigger hovering over it. This will take it out of your terminal and now you can use it, put it on your wall, whatever you wanna do with it. There are other items as well as the purchased items tab, your favorites tab, which if you favorite something inside of the Tabor market, which I will show you how to do, you can just buy it straight from your terminal and won't have to actually go back to the market every single time. Next up is your rations. Every once in a while you do get free items from Ghost of Tabor itself. So all you have to do to collect these is hit deliver to kiosk and you now have these items for free. There is six hour rations. If you hit next, you will go over to your daily rations, 24 hours to reset, and we should have weekly after this. Now that we're done with the terminal, we can go ahead and come over to the conveyor belt. This is another terminal where you can actually sell stuff to traders to get your money up. As you can see, since I pulled this AK out of my terminal, I can go ahead and sell it. All you have to do is throw your item on the conveyor belt and it will pop up up here on your terminal. The reason why there's so many different prices is because certain traders will give you more for certain items. As you can see, if I sell this weapon, the highest trader will be the merchant of death. If you're starting out and you just want to get more money, of course you can sell it to whoever pays the highest. But if you want to level up one of your traders, say Spectre, because I want to get better guns without actually having to find them, I will sell it to Spectre and take that few dollar loss. Now that you have sold it, your money actually does add up into your bank and I will show you the vault room which shows your Karuna total soon. If you accept a mission where you have to turn in a certain item, when you throw something in the terminal, you will hit the turn in button. If you're ever confused with the terminal, there is also a tutorial, but this should help you avoid needing 
completing that tutorial. That covers the entire bottom floor already, and this means we can head on to our next floor. Starting off with the power room, this one is very, very simple. You will have a generator, and this generator turns on all the lights in your bunker. The blue bar is how much gasoline you have left. Oops, I accidentally turned it off. <laughs> the blue level is how much gasoline you have in your generator at one time, and the black bar is obviously how much you don't. All you have to do is take the cap off the generator, get a gasoline tank, and I will show you where to buy these in the Tabor market to make it very easy for you. You can tilt it upside down, and you can even let go of it and let it drain itself into your generator. Quick little life hack. Once it is done, you take it off. You don't even have to put this cap back on, but I will, just because. Then you hit this giant red button and that will turn on your light. Now remember, if you go offline and you leave this on, it will burn all of your gasoline. So if you're getting off for the day, make sure you turn it off. Going over here next, we have the shooting range. The shooting range is very simple. There's a button to reset the targets and targets you can shoot. As you can see, in the range, you actually do consume ammo, so use this at your own supply. As you can see up here, this is our vault balance. Our vault balance in our vault room is how many total karunas you have. Right now, I have 200,000 karunas, and as you can see, there is a money deposit box and just a bunch of money laying around. If you were to want to give someone money, you could put money stacks in your backpack simply by grabbing them off your shelf. Each stack is 5,000 karunas. As you can see, if I plop this back in here, it goes up by 5,000. Each stack is 5,000, and by putting it in this box, it deposits it back into your total. So if you were to want to give someone money, you have to go into a raid to give it to them, and you have to be cautious, but it is very possible. Hit the pause button on your left controller or whatever you binded it to and hit Tabor Market. Tabor Marketplace is the best area ever in the game because you can buy any items that you have unlocked. So leveling up your traders is key to becoming very powerful in Ghost of Tabor. But what we are going to do is we're going to go over it. If you head over from where you spawn in the market down here, come down the corridors through the double French doors and you head out, there will be the salesman Merrick. Going up to the terminal on the wall next to him, you will see bunker resources. Go ahead and click here bunker resources and you will see the gas tank it costs 5,000 tickets but it's so worth being able to see in your bunker trust man go ahead and scan it this scan gun will be on your right hip and even if you lose it for some reason it will go back onto your hip shortly scan the item with your scanner like I did and then you can get rid of that go ahead to check out on whatever terminal you're buying it from and as you can see right here you can buy up to a max of five at one time get rid of the item off your shopping tab you can also favorite your item, and in, when favoriting an item, this is automatically saved into your terminal, so you never have to go back to the Tabor market to buy it again. And that is the entire Ghosts of Tabor bunker explained. If you found this video helpful, if you click on the video on screen, it will show you the best locations to loot in Ghosts of Tabor. I guarantee you, you will make eight times more money by watching this video.